have to understand that I'm Geraldo. I'm not anyone to trifle with. Oh. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Colin and Greg Live here on Twitch.tv slash Kinda Funny Games. Greg, yeah. how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Of course, this is our daily live show every day, every weekday at 11 a.m. Yep. Pacific time. We talk about all things nerd culture. Uh, it's like our daily podcast. Daily podcast? Kind of. It's not really available as a podcast. But you can kind of listen to it uh, as a yeah, podcast. You can, you, know, you can totally listen to it like a podcast. Everybody's always confused by that. Uh, Colin and Greg Live every day, 11 a.m. here mm -hmm. on Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, of course... It's easy enough to go if you don't want to get it on Twitch. If you're working, you're doing something else, you go to the Twitch archives, you play it from past broadcasts. If you come to just twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, there's past broadcasts down there. We know it sucks that it's not on the app on past broadcasts. That's on Twitch. That isn't us. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do for you. Um, so first of all, I want to I want to take a moment yeah. to just talk about slap the shirt. To slap your hand. Thank you. Slap well, I'm trying to do stuff over here yep. on the freaking mouse and your slap. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, people are, are commenting on the shirt. This comes from my good friends at Nintendo Sushi, a uh, Nintendo podcast uh, based over in the UK. Oh, um, and uh, I was on the show the recently. UK, they sell these shirts. They sent me this one, but they sell these. You should go check them out. Uh, great podcast, knowledgeable dudes, friendly dudes. And if you, either of you guys are watching, I owe you an email. I know that. So, I've been terrible this last week about answering I've email. been terrible since we quit. <laughs> since January 5th, I've been the worst email person possible. And you know, I used to pride myself uh, on getting back to people. I thought you were just going to say I used to pride myself. Well, I'm, I've been the unsung hero of our duo mm -hmm. and IGN and everything else for a you long time. You are definitely the unsung hero, Greg. Thank you for the resub, uh, Mr. Guiz. Um, so, I just wanted to throw that out there because people love this shirt. This shirt's, this shirt's awesome. This shirt's amazing. That's an amazing shirt right there. Um, Enough people giving you credit. That shirt's the unsung hero of your wardrobe. Timely to get this shirt, considering Majora's Mask's imminent release on right. 3DS. It's about to crash into you like a moon. It's, it's very good. Are you going to play it? Uh, yes, I will, I think. All right. Um, I'm gonna play it on my little. No, oh, no I can't see I'm not buying another piece of Nintendo hardware until they clean their act up, Greg. Yeah, that's it. You're putting them in the miners. Uh, putting them in the Myers. Is that a thing? Put, putting them in the Myers. Them back to the miners. Oh, the miners. I think they said Myers, like M I R E S. Oh, like this, like the store, like the Myers. Oh, store. M Y E R S. Yeah, yeah. It's been a good show. This is what we did. This is what we quit to do. Gregory. Yeah. Uh, we posted. I we didn't post. IGN posted our final podcast beyond. Right. And it, it went up late. Mm -hmm. People want to know where the audio is. We are just like you now. We don't know. We're on the outside. We went in there. We recorded it. And then we left all our powers. We were <laughs> Superman in Superman 2 stepping into the red sun chamber, having our powers taken away. The podcast began and ended the same way. And as, as you explained, a garbage truck rolling down. A, a, a garbage uh, uh, truck on fire rolling <laughs> down the street. That's just how it was. And that's how it will always be remembered. Yep. Final one. Done. For us. Yeah, for us, it, it continues, and I encourage you, as I did in my little address, my eulogy for yeah. our version of Podcast Beyond, right. and I hope you guys give it a, a chance. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Marty and Max Scoville will be taking the podcast over. I'm sure they'll have their own guests and their own style. They're not going to be doing the Roper Report. They're not going to be doing uh, Andrew Goldfarb Memorialist. They're not going to be doing Just the Tip and all that kind of stuff. Those were the those tip. were segments we did, and they, and they want to restructure the show, and I think that's going to work well for them. I don't think they can try to do what we were doing. I think they have to do their own show, much like... Um, Three red lights turned into unlocked, for instance, sure. and yeah. really found its rhythm. People love that show, and I have great confidence that Podcast Beyond can continue the the proud heights, the proud tradition, the comical heights that the podcast the reached. Comical lows, <laughs> um, and we wish them the very best. But uh, I just want to say personally that because um, I woke up this morning, uh, looked at the comments on the IGN story, looked at my Twitter yeah. feed, looked at my Facebook page, um, people were. Um, the outpouring of support for the podcast is just extraordinary. I don't yeah. think people understand, and you really said it very well in your in your closing comments, which weren't written as mine uh, yeah. as mine were. So uh, you know, maybe a little more off the cuff, as it were. And I wish I had thought of it. Which was the relationship was two ways. Mm -hmm. I often think about when we did podcasts beyond, um, and I was like in a really bad mood one week. This is maybe a year or so ago, maybe a little over a year ago. Yeah, and. Um, I was just like, I'm just not in the mood. I, I, I wasn't in the mood. I wasn't talkative. I was just, you know, I was just in a bad place. I said it on the show, and I just kind of went silent on Twitter for like four days. Because I was like, I just want to kind of be, you know, You just want to chill. You're, you're a big fan of chill. I got hundreds and hundreds of messages from people, you know, supporting me and, th you know, and, and Hoping trying to look okay, me out. And, and, the best. Yeah, get out of the funk. Get out of the pit. So when I, when, while people say that they, we help them get through a, a death or help them get through a divorce or just a bad time in school or whatever it is, yeah. they also helped us. Oh, yeah, a and, thousand times. And so I'll never forget that connection. That show means the world to us. We yeah. wish we could have kept doing it, but it's just not possible. You know? Right. And so 
we move on. These are our shows. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's the big thing. I mean, I, you know, I, it was funny when you were reading your thing, and I was trying not to cry even more than I was. That was one of the most tone. I mean, this does feel like a funeral. This is bad. And like, I understand everyone's reaction today, the tears people have shared, and the stories they're telling us, and all these different things. And I'm glad you're there. Well, we're there with you. Obviously, we mourned on Monday a bit. That was really our day for it. And now it's yours, being part of it, and being, having all these emotions unleashed on you at work or in your car. But keep in mind that yeah, the whole point of breaking away was not to go away. It was to have an even closer relationship with you. Colin and Greg live is here every day, live. 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. Then there's the Kind of Funny Games cast. Then there's the Game Over Greggy show. Both available on iTunes. You get them early on Patreon. You can go on YouTube. There's a million different ways we're interacting with you. The one thing that this dawned on me, and I haven't talked to Tim about it. I haven't talked to any of you about it, but Tim really hosts Kind of Funny Games cast. Mm-hmm. It dawned on me while doing Super Knocking Boots and then even looking through uh, when we were doing The Final Beyond mm. is the fact that we really don't have a listener mail segment. On any of the podcasts we do. Twitch is different. Twitch is a conversation with the chat. They're right here. Everybody's down there crying and stuff. That's the one thing I think we need to figure out how to integrate. I don't know if it works in a Game Over Greggy show because the topics, you don't know what the topic's going to be right until you download the show. But maybe, just maybe, we could do something like that on the Gamescast. We could figure it out. Yeah. We have to figure it out. The show's young. I mean, think about, think about how much podcast beyond change from episode one to episode 100, episode 200, episode right. 300. It's going to take time, you know? I think Tim is doing an admirable job, first of all, of hosting the show. Tim I don't is think, fantastic. I'm not... I, I'm not I don't know, I know, but I want to okay. say that, um, you know, I, I don't think it's easy. Much like it wasn't easy, I don't think, for Andrew to walk onto Podcast Beyond. I don't mm-hmm. think it was mm-hmm. easy for someone like Tim, who has no experience in front of the camera, who has no experience podcasting, really. Sure. Before we really, you know, huddled up with him to do sure. Game Over Greggy show. To be with two guys, and I'm not trying to toot our own horn, horn at all, but whether we're bad or we're good... I don't know. We just have a We know how to podcast. As we said about this particular show, we Whether were... Whether you like so, this show or hate this show. We are so comfortable with each other about podcasting. We didn't plan Colin and Greg Live at all. Like, we just sat down in one morning and just started doing it. And, and it shows. And, uh, yeah, it does show. But <laughs> the point is, is that I think that we have a good structure. We have a good team. You know, Tim is doing a great job. Nick's doing a great job. Yeah. I really like Colin and Greg Live. Um, and uh, I really like our, our, our shows. So it's, it's sad to say goodbye to Podcast Beyond, but much like... Uh, John Stewart leading the Daily Show, for instance. We'll get to that. Trying in a few to minutes. steal our fucking thunder. Um, we we also, you know, you have to walk away sometimes. And, yeah. And I really do hope that the show. I know how much the show means to people. You know, the mm-hmm. show means mm-hmm. a lot to me, and the show means a lot to you too. I really want to see it succeed, and I really hope that even though it's not going to be the same show for better or for worse, it could be better, it could be worse. I have no idea. Yeah. But I hope that people give it a chance. Yeah. You know, I really do. I I see a lot of comments people. So support, but I also see a lot of comments from people saying, "Well, you know, maybe it's time we we not listen to the show anymore." And don't do that. Give it a chance. Yeah, give them a shot. And keep see, coming and here, of course. Yeah, support all our stuff. Here's a question: You wanted me to show a graphic that came through email, correct, or was it Twitter? I'm the, sorry. The graphic you showed me. Oh, earlier. this came through email. Which email did it come to? I can't uh, find it on any of my emails. I don't know what I'm looking for. Let me see. I will. I'll just forward it to you. It says what, which. Yeah, I don't know which account that is. I don't know how to even see that. Just click on the little down arrow. It's Gmail. Oh. Start using your Gmail, right, brother? All right, it's just at my normal one. I just missed it for some reason. I'm feeling this. It's right there. I'm feeling this. Keep saying it. I'm feeling this. I wanted to go for a close. I'm feeling this. All right, here this is from Charlie Gadsden. He's he was a big part of Podcast Beyond uh, 381 yesterday. He's been a big part of Beyond forever. He sent in this the top ten, top ten all time Beyond appearances. That's crazy to mm-hmm. see this spell that. First off, just the black bar of no longer with IGN is so weird. <laughs> Especially like to see us in... I don't, the other day we went out to dinner uh, and drinks with a whole bunch of our friends. Mm-hmm. Charles, Sin, the whole... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I'm out there and I looked around and I was like, y- y- we still connect all those people with IGN because that's where we're from. But you look around like, well, nobody at this table works at IGN anymore. Yeah, it's funny how we, we've made, you know, with the exception of maybe like Eric Castro. Yeah. And just a few, so, like a really a small... I'm not even sure if anyone is as close to Eric Castro that is not in the gaming industry or that we haven't met through the gaming industry, even Eric Castro and Mike Mitchell we met through Podcast Beyond. Right, right, right. So it's right. like, it's funny how, you know, IGN giveth in that sense. You know, yeah, like, no, it, no, like, we, like all, all, yeah. of our, all of our friends, um, you know, came from that. But it's funny you say that because I was reflecting on that as well later. Yeah. Not even in the moment, but later on, I was like, you know, because I was thinking about the email I sent, Sin, Charles, uh, Ty Root, um, Baradon, you yeah, know, yeah. and it's like, we really all did work together, and we are all just, it's like a diaspora, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like, and you're just, you're just, just scattered now. about yeah. now. But I think this is really cool, what do you think of this? Oh, this is amazing, and it's just something like, I don't know, it never really dawned on me when we were, t- when people, like, the number of shows I was actually on, the number of shows, it's weird that there's a hundred episodes exactly separating us, that's really bizarre. Yeah, I think that, 
it, I also would have thought you would put Clint away by now. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I mean, I, I mean, I'm ahead, but this is with a I mean, margin like, of error. Just like destroy. Oh, there's a margin of error. No, nah, no, I probably not because it's not a poll. Greg. Charlie is not gonna. Charlie wouldn't be. Charlie and M Dog, we trust implicitly. I think that I probably. I mean, this shows in fact that I missed a lot of episodes. I mean, Jesus Christ, is this guy downstairs? Uh, I missed quite a few episodes. I mean. I yeah. started as a regular around 100. It was probably like, I mean, I was on before 100, but I think I started on every episode no later than I would say 105, maybe. Yeah. So this shows that I've missed. I missed quite a few episodes. I mean, there were times where I missed two episodes in a row. I also travel internationally a lot when I was yeah. in Dijan and stuff. So I think it would have been more like 270, maybe, if I had not missed those episodes. So sure. I probably missed about 25 weeks. Sure, 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 say, sure, right? sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, Roper. Obviously, I feel like I, I mean I know it's right, but man, like the fact that I missed basically forty episodes is crazy. I, I would have said, I guess I, I I went on a lot of trips too. That's and those add up. Your comic cons and stuff add up after a while. But damn, and I'm surprised. I feel like we had Jim on. Uh, what, what were we calling him at the end of Bob? Newsboy. Newsboy. Yeah, yeah. Jim the Newsboy because <laughs> it was the News Hound, and they wouldn't do the Wolf anymore, so he got demoted to Newsboy. We did not like that one. I bit. feel like he was on longer, but it's crazy. Like Jeremy is the founder. He's only on twenty six episodes yeah. before he left. Um, and Brian's the only one uh, left that's still at IGN. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure his involvement in the new podcast beyond. So, I mean, we have a... I mean, it's very interesting. Did Charlie in his email talk about what his, uh, like, threshold was here? Or just this is, like, announced regular? Because, like, where is... I mean, Marty obviously only has a few episodes. Was it anybody who didn't break I 10? I think that this is the top 10. Top 10. Ah, there it is. And that, that his email sense. says, fear not, Marty will break into the top 10 with his next appearance on oh, the good. show. Oh, good. Okay, good. So, I guess he was on 15 times. Um, or 16, and that's a tie. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Fascinating. It's a lot. I mean, when you I challenge anyone to come for this number, any podcast beyond person to I come. I challenge this anyone. Number. I challenge anyone to come from Chris Roper on. To be perfectly honest, yeah, you know, like that's that's Jeff Haynes going to come back. Make that's a run for that's it. like two and a half years where Chris Roper is. Yeah. So imagine where we are, <laughs> you know, and then yeah, imagine yeah. where you are. Yeah. Those not. I think those not. I think I think the top four are probably pretty safe. For now. It's we'll lock, see. It's a lock. We'll lock see. of the week. Lock of the lock of the millennium. A lot of good memories there, man. Hard to leave it behind. Thanks to everybody. The outpouring of support today has been crazy. It's it's uh, it's like we quit all over again, which I and I didn't anticipate until I think we were doing the episode and we were getting so chugged up. That's when I was like, oh fuck, like this is going to be a big deal to a lot of people and a lot. This will be a lot of people's, I guess, reality check that we all are gone and you have to come follow us somewhere else if you want us or just leave us behind if you're not willing to come follow us on other. I, stuff. I mean, I think that, you know. I separate IGN and Podcast Beyond in the sense that I think I got used to not being at IGN before we even left because we, we had sure. quit for like we, we quit in October and we didn't yeah. leave until the end of December. I agree with that. And I just wasn't I didn't want to I was I was getting out of and didn't really want to candidly do the day to day there anymore. Like it was just, that's why we moved on. It's just that like you know my like I think Nick put it really well to me once. So I'm not sure if we did it on Game of Gregory. We were just talking. He's like your dreams just changed. You know that was yeah. your dream. It was a great way to spend your 20s, and I'm totally honored to have been there and contributed to you know the greatest gaming website the biggest gaming website in the, in the world yeah um but podcast beyond is my baby yeah you know and yeah. our baby and yeah. especially your baby i'm like the, i'm like you were there you birthed it yeah, with yeah chris yeah. roper right and and, and chris, dunham and jeff yeah yeah but like you and chris were really i mean dunham and jeff especially dunham with jeff later they, they were both gone pretty sure. early sure, sure 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 and you guys were there consistently for two and a half years yeah and Roper, you know, uh, left, and I came in. Um, I was already there when Roper was on the show, but I was kind of like your second marriage. Yeah. But you, what you realized was that you loved your first wife. Yeah. But that your second wife was was really your soulmate. And she was so much hotter. Um, that's that's that remain. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh. That's when we quit. We can do that. There's no HR department. Yeah. Who's gonna fire us? <laughs> um, so. I really care very deeply about Podcast Beyond. Yeah. IG, in other words, IGN is this big thing that many people have touched over the years and shaped, right? Yeah. Matt Casamassina, Fran's still there. I mean, there are guys from, you know, Corey and, and Dan Adams and David Adams and, like, guys that have just, over the years, since 1996, 1997, touched the site, right? Yeah. Most of them are gone. Right. Podcast Beyond was ours. We built it. Right, and, right, right, right. And That was our legacy. Yeah, and it had very few people had anything to do with it other than us. You yeah. Know? So it's like... It succeeded or failed based on us. The reason yeah. it became IGN's most popular podcast and the, mo the most popular po PlayStation podcast and one of the most popular, popular gaming podcasts in the entire world of any kind was because of us. Yeah. And it's not because people necessarily liked us or not. It's because we were just consistent and we cared about that product. So sure. 
it really hit me when I started crying, and I know it really upset you. It really hit me that I fucking care about this show. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm really going to miss this show. Life without IGN, we go, we move on. Yeah, Life yeah. without podcast beyond, it's gonna be a little tougher for me because that's our baby. Right. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, the hard part, right, is that we had. We built this community, and I always used to say on that show, and, and, and Game Scoop and every other show, right? By listening to the show, you're our best friend, blah, blah, blah. And then that's what we've brought as our mantra here, right? And that's what we call people who consume our, con- our kind of funny content, that you're best friends. And I'm, I like that from the get-go. I've been able to express that. But the problem, right, is that like, no matter what we do, when we come out and leave Beyond Behind, we won't bring everybody. And not in like a weird numbers way, like we want to be the biggest video game podcast. You know what I mean? Like I just mean like there's some people who we have to say goodbye to that won't follow us over here. That have been a part of our lives and we've been a part of their lives and that sucks. It's hard. Uh, S. Bryce was Beyond Greg, has gone off to college. Greg quote, I quit IGN so I could grope Colin's boobs. Yeah, what are they going to do? What do you think about this pair? You're not here to st- <laughs> you're not here to save this pretty young man anymore, are you? <laughs> um, with with that said, uh, we want to wish just again our very best. Um, IGN moves on. They're, they're totally fine without us. Thanks Big uh, Dog for subscribing. And uh, we wish our very best to Max and Marty. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see as, what they do as with they, it. As they, they bring podcasts beyond into, the next, into its next era. Um, and I, be, I meant to tweet it at Max today, and I will, because he, he tweeted something very nice. Like, we have big shoes filled, and I thought that was really nice. I was on, the, on my elliptical, so I couldn't answer at the time. But I wanted to say, just talk about Vita for 30 to 45 minutes every week. You're going to be just fine. Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely get a group. Uh, like some kid in there was like all mad on the, on the YouTube that we talked about Persona too much. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about Persona. That's it. This rest of this show is going to be all about Persona 5. <laughs> um, so, uh, again, uh, go to IGN. Check out the podcast. Continue to listen to it. Continue to go to IGN. Uh, we wish them the very, very best. Yeah. Uh, we wish the podcast the very, very best. And we're super proud of the legacy we built there with that show. Um, and like any good father that, like they said, send, send your boy off to college and, yeah. uh, or your girl off to college and... And see what happens. And, uh, you know, we, I'm sure you have not seen The Last of Us on Podcast Beyond. Um, but we are no longer, that is no longer, we no longer shall. I'm never going with Bucket Fat. Bush. Greg's having a What if I just died? What Greg's if I died? The, what if it was like Charles Schultz in the final Beyond publishes and I die? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. On live stream, too. Oh, man. What would you do if I died right now? Then what would you I'd be fucking devastated. What would be, well, I know I know that part. But then beyond that, what would happen beyond? What would happen with the business? You think you take Tim and Nick would continue? I think we probably could, but I think I it would you, be I, I, want think, you I to. think it would be difficult. I I think I'm not sure I'd want to. By the way, Dean Astley subscribed. Thank you, Dean Astley. Thank, oh, Dean. Yeah, I know I know that. Yeah, that's, we know Dean. Thank you very much. Uh, he was waiting. See, he was one of the ones waiting. He's like, I'm not going to I'm not going to commit to this kind of funny business until they're done with Beyond. Beyond's dead. All right, here I come. Um, <laughs> press left. Not call 911. <laughs> I I don't know. I slip over and die, and you just break down. Everyone in the chat's like, "Come on!" And then we, and then we immediately, I bring in Nick and Tim, and I'm like, "What do we do now with the business?" (laughs) Greg's dead. Cameras still on my dead body. (laughs) Cameras on my dead body. You guys are right over there talking about it. Um, Thank you, from Bertilla. Somebody pointed out we need to put a two up there now. Uh, Two days about technical difficulties. Okay. This is now ties the record. Mr. Supercomputer, which is an awesome name, just subscribed. Um, And Joker J13 just subscribed for two months in a row. Thank you. Ninjilly just subscribed two months in a row. Thank you. Um, Goliath five five three says maybe Max Goville could fill in for Dead Greg. It's kind of funny. It's entirely <laughs> possible. We'll see. What, we'll see if we can tender him an offer. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's wait, let's wait for Greg to to die first. Uh, no, I, I don't think Greg. If something God forbid happened to you, yeah, I wouldn't want to do any of this anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's with you or it's, it's it's not happening at all. Okay, in my mind. Okay, you know? I respect that. Uh, I think you'd be fine without me. I think I'd probably be fine without you too, but it's just a principle thing. Sure, it'd be weird. I, I wouldn't want to do it. How weird Beyond is without us, but then if I died on camera doing this show, and then you just kept doing Colin and Greg Live. But just more generally, like, if you just, if we just didn't do this anymore, like, if we were just like... like chicks two months in a row? We just walked away, and it was like, I don't know, Colin's alone, and I just, I don't, I don't feel like we're ever going to be kind of separated like that again. No, we're in love, we always will be. Um, all right, Whippy Ice has a question that I didn't know. Maybe it's going to come up with news. Are you going to watch the SpaceX launch today? Uh, no, but I know that it was delayed. I don't know exactly why um, it was delayed. Maybe weather or something like that. Oh, okay. But no, I mean, I, SpaceX is going to be launching a lot of shit. I'm not going to be watching the launches. Until someone goes to Mars, <laughs> they're going to be watching watch... a lot of shit. They are. I mean, they, 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 you know. Look uh, at that one. Don't, don't read it aloud. That's an interesting one. Oh. That would be great. Yeah. That would right. be really huge. Somebody wants Maybe to we can interview get, somebody very important. We we'll get him on the show. We have a lot of that things That would be pretty planned. nuts. We have a lot of things planned for the show. We can get him on the show. All right. That would be insane. 
I think you're gonna. I think GDC is gonna be a very impressive week for us. I love GDC, dude. Let's just talk about that real quick. Okay. GDC is awesome. It's my favorite show, and it's not because it's in San Francisco and therefore we don't have to fucking travel. It's, yeah, it's easy. Which I, makes me want to kill myself. Yeah. Um. But GDC is just for me for kind of the more. I like the more intellectual aspect, I think, of gaming, meaning, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff, the way the game is created. How the created. sausage gets made. Exactly. And that's what GDC is all about. Yeah. It's a, it's a fusion of uh, developers and publishers and journalists and just media types and everyone, like, just marketers and everyone coming together. It's, it's, there's nothing like it. And I think that... It, the E3 is very similar to Gamescom, which is very similar to TGS. Uh, PAX is just like PSX, which is just like Rooster Teeth. Like, you know, there's, like... Fan shows and Comic Con shows, sure. then there's like the media shows. But GDC is awesome. You're right. And to be able to, I'm excited to go to GDC this year because I don't have to write anything. Because I used to have to go to these panels. I've told this story before, but I, I like I, I used to go to the nerdiest panels. And I remember, I'll never forget the one panel I went to was about Resistance Three, where they how they place the enemies, how they put the Chimera on, on maps, and like why yeah, yeah, it mattered yeah. and how it flowed. Make the and I was like, this is fascinating. And they would show footage and like these schematics about like. We want the guy to flow this way through the map, so we have the Chimera come in this, this way, way, which chases them to this place, and then the Chimera come in this, and it's like, you don't think about that when no, you're on, no, when no, you're no, on a no. set piece in a shooter, yeah, and yeah. the whole hour and a half was about how they built their set pieces. I'm like, this yeah. is awesome. Yeah. You don't see that at E3. Here's my question about this GDC business. Okay. It's been announced via the Patreon people that they are turning over a part of their office to us so we can live stream this show, Colin and Greg Live, 11 a.m., from the Patreon office, Monday, Wednesday, Monday through Wednesday, because then we fly to PAX. I'm booking a lot of guests for those GDC shows, for mm. those GDC, a lot of developers coming over saying, hey, some journal friends coming over saying, hey, being a part of this show, talking about the industry and everything mm. else. This, we always talk about, you know, the audience being part of this show. They're mm -hmm. the best friends. They get to help drive it. I haven't bounced this idea off you, but I like doing it in the public setting. What if we, what, should we be streaming all day? Meaning we don't go to GDC. No, not necessarily. Which we, is fine if we, that's what we... What if we did like 11 to 5 or 4 or whatever, and then it's not, we don't go to panels, we don't go to GDCs, it's that we can go, we can go. Oh, there's this panel I want to see about Naughty Dog, we can leave, Tim and Nick could host. We could, developers could bring their games to us, we could live play games there for three days. Mm. It's a lot of work. Hey, taking over, taking over, yeah boy. Don't shut the door. It's hot. I'm sorry. No, it really, it, really, it really affected your whole thing, though. You want, you needed to shut the door for full effect, and you couldn't do it. Yeah. You leaving? Yeah, I'm going to grab Starbucks. You guys want anything? Yeah, give me the coffee. Yeah. Love you. Um, I'm fine. Thank you. Bye. Bye. But it, it's a lot of work. But again, this show is just goofy. Like, in, in this show, you're not expecting much, right? If we were here... This show, you're not expecting much. That should be the new tagline. It's like the... Colin and Greg Live. It's like the show, Vita, not that... You're not expecting much. The Vita, 17 years of failures in one day. <laughs> <laughs> My, it, so, I mean, but I'm saying it doesn't have to be like E3 presentation quality, right? It could be it's me and you... It's me, you, and then Alexa Ray pops by to mm. kill it what, sometime. And then Cappy came over and shows below. And then, what, you know what I mean? Like, it could be really free-flowing. It's something I want you to marinate on. I kind of like it. I kind of like that idea because the beauty of GDC too is that most of their stuff is archived, and you, so like if you miss, uh, you might have to wait a little while. But if you miss yeah. a panel that you want to go to, you can just watch it online later, which is awesome. Sure. That's why, another reason why GDC is great because um, it's so instructive. It, getting into GDC, I don't think we'll have to pay because we're media, but getting into GDC for developers and publishers is expensive. Companies spend lots and lots of... I don't think people appreciate like how much a, a publisher like EA sp spends yeah. to send their people, to buy their people passes to send them there. I would say... I mean, this is just a prediction. I don't know if you disagree, but I would say a, a publisher like EA with all... Like oh, visceral, EA? Yeah, with Visceral and Bioware, they probably spend at least half a million dollars sending their people to GDC, if not more, because they have to put, buy their passes, which are hundreds of dollars each. They have to put them up if they're bringing guys from Edmonton and all that kind of stuff. But they, it's so important for them to go, to learn, yeah. and to network that they do those kinds of things. That said, I think that um, it's it's a really compelling thing that you're saying because w we can entertain during GDC. Mm -hmm. GDC, I don't feel like is entertaining to a lot of game enthusiasts that aren't there. Right. I feel like you can, because there's not a focus on games, future games. A lot of it's post-morning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, so I think I like the idea. What I think I think the easiest way to do it would be to reach out to devs who are have upcoming games and see if they're down to bring them to us. Because if they are, then it's easy, right? We're sitting here, you and I are BSing about whatever just happened over there. Then somebody comes in and like, hey, we brought our, and that could even that might even be a better idea. 
Stick with me on this motherfucking gold nugget. Just fell from the sky. It's this big. Do you still call it a nugget if it's this big? I don't know. It's I, not I, a brick. I, 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 I'm afraid I'm not a geologist. Gold meteorite just crashed into it. A gold meteorite? What if we we could even do this? We have scheduled, like we talked, mm. some of the guests we've already booked mm. that are big names coming through. But then we just also put up the old t-shirt cannon shotgun approach. Of, and we just put it out. We're like, bringing a game to GDC, bring it on our live stream. Give out the address. And we just... And no plan. Some indie, indie, well, we, like, well, when they get there, they can check in or whatever and do it. Because I have just, some exciting things in, in play too, Greg. And we, we got some, you know, and I've, I've, wor I've worked you in a few of these things. For instance, I suspect we might see our friends from Drinkbox when we're at GDC. Chris? I'm, that son of a bitch. That motherfucking lanky bastard is Canadian G. That was, I just want to say when we were at PSX, it was a solemn thing. We couldn't tell anyone why. Yeah. But it was very solemn for us because... We knew that that was our last convention as doing Podcast Beyond. That was our last right, convention. Right, yeah, GSX was super safe. And I loved how we ended it at dinner with Drinkbox. Yeah. And that was a great memory for me. Right, Those yeah. guys are great. We're going to see Severed. They're going to be there. It was fun to tell cool. them, yeah, because they they're fans of all the content we make. Um, so just to watch their reaction. That was the best thing. I always talk about it, you know what I mean? Like I, People always, I always talk about that, that podcast like The Moth, where you tell true stories in front of a live audience, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? When they did their first inaugural Moth one, I told a story... And I did it, I set it up like I would be talking to you guys of like, it, it, it was going to be sad, it sounded like, because I was like, you know, it was secrets, right? Like, you know, I was like, it's a cool secret to have cancer. And it totally didn't play to the crowd because they just heard cancer and they didn't know I'm just some loudmouth asshole. But what I liked about having cancer and what I liked about this is it's very, very rare in your life. You can think back in your life of the time you've had news so huge but you know it's gonna rock whoever you tell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that would like that was what was fun about PlayStation Experience. I'm like, remember like Clements didn't know we were leaving IGN and Podcast Beyond and all that until after the Podcast Beyond panel signed. And he thought we were joking. We sat there for two hours and signed, and then finally had a quiet moment with Clements. Because we had to like, we had to protect we were protecting the secret still. Yeah, that's why we yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it was just like we love Clement so much that that's not something I wanted to tell him over the phone or through an email. I wanted to be there with him, right? Because he built Podcast Beyond with us. Mm -hmm. And so we got to drop that on him and then drop it on Drinkbox. And then, like, we tried to drop it on Sony PR, but they all knew. Yeah, I don't know how they knew. I have no idea how they knew. They um, have their ways. But, uh, yeah, it seemed like a lot of the PR and, like, kind of industry-type people knew already. Yeah. Um, and then it was... But it was... I can't believe it didn't leak. Yeah, like, me neither. I mean, that, that's the thing. And I want to... I want to... This might sound weird... But stick with me, because it's it. I don't want it to sound. I want to thank everybody who's in the industry, everybody who you know at the time, joystick, polygon, whatever. Like when we told everybody in October that we were leaving, you know, obviously IGN was like, "Hey, don't tell other people." That's a load of bullshit, right? Everyone who's an industry person understands off the record, so you can tell. You, we learned something about game X. We yeah, we know lots of things like, off the record. Way, it's a, this is off the record. It's a res it's a respect thing, in any I think, in, in probably any field, right? But you would know better than me. You understand that the, you, the viewer, understand that there's a lot of sites out there. And while people might love Colin and Greg as a journalist, they might have a chip on their shoulder about IGN. They might. IGN's number one, right? Like it, it is one of those things. You this would have been an easy an easy play to take a shot at them to have an exclusive to say on NeoGAF they heard like under a different name they heard this da da da. And maybe we're putting too much. Uh, uh, pride in what we are and how big our news was, right? But I think the fact that, like, the host of IGN, the, you know, one of the biggest faces of IGN, were leaving IGN could have been a nice exclusive for somebody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That could have been something that you handed off secondhand through somebody else and, it, and nobody did it. Nobody talked about it. Everybody on the day we announced... And I, we told tons of people. Mm -hmm. Everybody on the day we announced, that's when they sent their congratulations, their, you know, best wishes and stuff like that. Yeah, our friends at GameSpot knew our friends, you know, I'm sure yeah. Polygon knew, and I'm sure, you know, a, a lot of the guys that have their ear to the ground. Mm -hmm. We're going to hear from Jason Schreier in a little while, Kotaku, who I think is one of the great journalists, actually, in, in yeah. the gaming industry. I'm sure he knew, I'm sure. But yeah, people respected it, and I think that that's great. DD Dre 54 kind of funny games expect a lot but not that much <laughs> alright let's roll on Greg alright let's uh, actually get into some we news. have a lot of news uh, right now I want you to know though this is the GDC poll that I closed immediately when I went in there uh, only 2.3% say just do the usual everybody okay. else says we'll do something for GDC because I, I really do love GDC and I, mm -hmm. I would like to uh, I'd like to do it justice and I'd like to do the developers especially the indie developers there justice see that's the thing is GDC is such a big show for indies to come show their games that I love the idea of saying hey indies come on what do you got if you got one of them iPads, you got to bring the connector. I don't have that. Uh, Greg, let's start with uh, some Spider-Man news. Thanks, LM Intrepid. More there, Spider-Man there, news. Well, there, there's, there's more to this than we, we knew. At least about how the deal went, went out behind closed doors as well. Oh. Um, here, I'll, 
Uh, I'm going to take a moment, Greg, and just send you some of these links so you don't have to look for them. Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah, well, I'll Why don't you talk, why don't you talk and I'm going to send you the pertinent links. What's up, everybody? It's me, Greg Miller, from Kind of Funny. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thanks for joining us. We do this every day. Remember, 11 a.m., we come in here and we do this Colin and Greg live show for about an hour, hour and 15, hour and a half, whatever the news demands. At the end, we'll chat with you in the comments. We go through it right now, but there's so much happening. Then, we turn it to subs only. You chat with us then. If you decide to be a sub, awesome. You don't have to be. But it gets you uh, emoticons, it gets you a little smiley face next to your name, it gets you the private chat time with us, and then it also gets you automatically entered to win the Friday giveaway. If you didn't know, every day on this show we go through the prize box, grab a new prize, put it into a prize package, and then on Friday give it away. We give it away through, if you're a sub, or if you're in the chat room. We merge all the names together, automatically pull one out and say, that's the winner, there you go, and we mail it off to you. You have a good time. Everyone loves life. You like Everyone loves life. If you like the content we're doing here, of course, check us out on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, you can go to kindoffunny.com. That's the easiest way. There you have both YouTube pages, Kind of Funny and Kind of Funny Games, merged into one. There's a Patreon link there, too, if you want to get our podcasts early. If you don't, they go up free on YouTube, and they go up free. What's, what are you pointing at? Uh, it's 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 time to it's time to use the email. Oh, I can stop now. I can stop. I can stop. Uh, shucking a job. By the way, more people are asking because I know people have joined us late. Where I got the shirt from? This shirt is from my friends at Nintendo Sushi. You can buy it from them. Um, they do a, a great Nintendo podcast uh, that I was on uh, some time ago. Not not that long ago, maybe a month ago. Um, talk, we talked about Majora's Mask. They know I love Majora's Mask, so they were kind enough to send me this. Um, so go support them. They're great guys. And if, again, if you guys are watching, I owe you an email. I know. Uh, Greg, so yeah. Spider Man. You want this is the one, right? Yeah. There's two stories for Spider Man. Which one are you going? Uh, this one, the Hollywood Reporter one's fine. Um, with it's Mark, fine. Uh, the story by Tatiana Siegel says, and poor as Kit says, God damn uh, from Hollywood Reporter says, with Marvel deal, Sony opts to lease rather than sell Spider Man. So mm-hmm. we got a little bit of a taste here behind the scenes of what happened with this with this monumental Spider Man deal. It's a huge deal to Marvel fans. Um, and it says, instead of selling the rights to the web slinging superhero back to Marvel, Sony skewed the quick cash and returns for the benefits of free exposure to a younger, rebooted Spider-Man franchise. So immediately... Brilliant idea. So yeah, well, it's a risk-reward kind of thing, right? Right. They, Sony Pictures posted, as we learned last week, a minor profit of like $20 million, which is nothing mm-hmm. for a company that size. Uh, but they're in the black. They could use the cash, I'm sure. Sure. Um, but they, you know, as I said... This is an investment. This is a long-term investment. Exactly, because they're going to reboot Spider-Man yet again. Um, so I thought that this was a, just an interesting story. People can go read it. I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but it, there's more to the story because we have another a different story from a different source. But this gives you a little bit of a, a look into the financials of the deal. Do you agree with the move? Because you figure it's right now anything that touches the Avengers Marvel universe seems to go incredibly well. It seems to be turned to gold. So by putting him, I feel, into the you know Captain America Civil War movie, as we assume is happening, uh, you then get the badge of cool, right? That I think most audience people, if you're just a casual mainstream audience going to see this, you don't understand the fact that Sony owns Spider-Man, Fox owns X-Men, Marvel has, in Disney now, have Avengers in that universe. So by putting them in here, it kind of looks like an offshoot, and very similar in the way of like every time that Marvel logo pops up and people flip out that, oh man, they get to do this new thing, they're going to see that now with Spider-Man, I think. And I think it's, uh, I, I, I personally think it's a shrewd move. Personally. Shrewd. I think you have to play the long game. Shrewd business move. Um, the other story, Greg, if you have it up from a Variety, Talks about what the next Spider-Man movie will be. Sure, this is at least according to their sources from Mark Rasser, the senior editor, and Brett Lang, the senior film and media reporter at Variety. It says the next Spider-Man will go back to high school. Not a huge surprise there, I guess. Sony is going younger with its next Spider-Man. Now that Andrew Garfield is hanging up the red and blue spandex, Sony Pictures is getting ready to put out a casting call to find its next web slinger. The plan is for a character to go back to high school in the next films Variety has learned from sources with knowledge of the studio's plans. A number of actors have already been mentioned as being considered for the role, including the Maze Runner and Teen Wolf's Dylan O'Brien and the Percy Jackson franchise's Logan Lerman. Lerman most recently co-starred in Sony's Fury. Actors have yet to have been approached, and sources say Sony is looking to hire a new director to replace the Amazing Spider-Man film's Mark Webb before tapping a new Spidey. The studio also needs to figure out whether it wants to go with another Peter Parker or introduce another character that suits up as Spider-Man, including Miles Morales whose father is African-American and mother is Puerto Rican. Now, I hope that they do that. I think that that... I, I, how do you feel about that? Because I, I, I would like to see a different look for Spider-Man, uh, just a different character other than Peter Parker, you know? I would, too. And here's... This is... You've now... We, there's a lot to unpack here. So, I love Miles Morales. I love Ultimate Spider-Man. I love that whole... The whole Ultimate universe they built and then continue it on into Miles. Here's the problem. Is that I stand by the drunk... Uh, podcast reaction we did here on Kinda Funny when we did it live here on Twitch is that there has to be the moment in Civil War 
If they're going to go... If, and granted, I'm playing this very, stri very close to the comic book. Maybe Civil War doesn't go down the exact same way and then it's completely different. Mm. If it's about the uh, anti-superhero you know, uh, superhero registration act or whatever, the superhero registration act, then you need that moment of Spider-Man dropping down and pulling off his mask and saying, I'm Peter Parker and I've been, I've been Spider-Man since I was 15. Now they're going younger, so they're knocking that out. If they're committed to this being a younger Spider-Man and they are committed to this not being about the registration act, then do Miles. I'm totally fine with you doing Miles. I think audience have spoken with Amazing Spider-Man and said, we're fucking sick of this. Like, why are you telling us the same story, right? Like, so you figure the Sam Raimi Spider-Man, those three ones were events. People loved them. It was so awesome to get out and see them. Three sucked, but you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Amazing Spider-Man came around, and I was like, Ugh. I didn't even, I didn't have the energy to go watch it again because I just didn't want to get into it, you know, another thing. And then Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out, and it's just been fucking flogged on the internet and I saw the first half of it on the plane I was like oh this is actually kind of good I want to watch this now but it's weird that everybody hated it like I understand the, the fact that they, Sony and this is on Sony can't stick to a universe and can't stick to a character and can't stick to a uh, timeline that's upsetting and so yeah washing your hands of it and putting in miles would work if you're not doing the registration stuff which the rumors I read on I think Ain't It Cool News a few weeks ago the rumor is that it's not really tied to the Superhero Registration Act as much as it's tied to Fallout from this upcoming Avengers film. So I don't know. But if they're getting away from the registration, then yes, do Miles. Okay. So, so, Dean Astley, Return of uh, Tobey Maguire. It's going to be hard for Tobey to play the 40-year-old awesome. Tobey. That would be, to awesome. that. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, so I thought that that was an interesting uh, little story, uh, Greg. Yeah. Now, I want to move on to something a little different. Oh, good. Um, I sent you the link to this, too. This comes from the Smithsonian. Um, and yeah, this is the one. This is really awesome. I don't know. Did, did you hear about this? Oh, I did hear about this. Yeah, yeah, this is cool. So, um, Neil Armstrong, obviously the first man to walk on the moon. Right, we know. One of America's great heroes. Eagle has landed. Um, he died recently. Mm -hmm. Not so recently, but you know, in, in, you know, in August 2012, I think. Yeah. Um, and they found stuff in his closet. Yeah, his that... wife was going through his closet, right? Found all this stuff and invited the Smithsonian to come get it. It's awesome. So the story reads in part, At the National Air and Space Museum, as elsewhere around the world, we are we're enormously sad when we learn that Neil Alden Armstrong, the first man to set uh, foot on the moon, died of complications and of heart surgery in August 2012. Not long afterwards, his family contacted the museum about artifacts he left in his home in Ohio. In November, museum curators Margaret Whitecamp, Alex Spencer, and I, who the writer, whoever the writer is, traveled to Cincinnati and were warmly greeted by his widow, Carol. We reviewed the items with the intention of listing those we felt appropriate for possible donation to the National Collection. The Armstrong family had already decided to donate Neil's correspondence and paper files to his alma mater, Purdue University. The remaining collection of Boy, personal items and memor memorabilia was also extremely rich. Um, the post is, this post is about something else, however. A few weeks after we returned to Washington, D.C., I received an email from Carol Armstrong saying that she had located in one of Neil's closets a white cloth bag filled with assorted small items that looked like they may have come from a spacecraft. She wanted to know if they were also interested of interest in the museum. She provided the following photograph of the bag and items spread out on her carpet. So this is the, 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 uh, the stuff here. Yeah. Needless to say, for a curator of a collection of space artifacts, it is hard to imagine anything more exciting. Realizing how important it would be to determine when any, whether any or all of these items were actually flown in the lunar module Eagle... During the historic Apollo 11 mission, I decided to enlist the expertise of Eric Jones, blah, blah, blah. The bag itself was immediately recognizable. They go on to say, if you if you scroll down, um, that a lot of this stuff was in the air with them. And, and in space camera, with them. This camera is the famous camera, right? It's insane. It's fucking insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's so cool. Because a lot of the stuff, even the moon rocks and stuff, they were, they were, you know... NASA and the government were all over these things. Yeah. You know, like the the moon rocks they got back were precious. They wanted to examine them. All the stuff was there was also a fear of you know fear of contamination going both ways. Sure. Um. So they found like all these awesome things. So if you scroll down to the bottom, um, these this tether it says Apollo 11 waist tether used by Neil Armstrong to suspend his legs as he attempted to get comfortable during the rest period inside the lunar module. So once they landed and there was you know little gravity. Yeah. yeah. It's just incredible. I saw this story. I was like, this is incredible. I ain't 58. I'm too. High. I'm way too high for this craziness. <laughs> so I wanted to share that with people because I thought that was really cool. Obviously, a lot of people love science and space that listen to this show, and I do too. And when I saw this, I saw it on Drudge Day. I was like, "This is incredible. It's really cool." You know, um, saw it on Drudge Day. You know where I saw it? Yesterday on IGN.com. Oh, did you? Yeah, that's very nice. Oh, maybe that's <laughs> oh, where I maybe nice. that's where I found it too. I saw something on Drudge Day. Uh, did you read things? that Majora's Mask on Drudge too? <laughs> um, Greg, let's move on to some interesting gaming news. Our buddy Eddie, Eddie Spot. Uh, he just wrote this piece, and I thought this was really interesting. It's just kind of a, something to begin a conversation about 
DLC because and a day one DLC especially, which some sure. people have problems with. I typically don't have problems with day one DLC because you don't have to buy it. I think it's a little re like a little bit reductive to say this could have been in the main game or you guys could have put this in the main game. Not necessarily. They have plans to produce their content for the main game and then they have like their side quests and all this kind of stuff. But Eddie wrote a story um, about Evolve. And it's launching, it launched yesterday on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And it already has $136 worth of DLC, according to uh, Eddie over there. 44 pieces of add-on content are available now for Turtle Rock's just released multiplayer game, it says. Mm. Um, and he writes, launch day mm. DLC is no new thing. Personalization packs such as a character and weapon skins are par for the course with many games today. But while some games offer just a few extra options at launch, expanding later, Turtle Rock's new title Evolve give players a veritable feast of add-on content to consume. If you want to buy all of the Evolve DLC available right now, it would cost you $136 on top of the $60 a game or the $25 DLC pass. There are 44 pieces of Evolve add-on content listed on Xbox One's Marketplace, available in the $2 to $7 range. The DLC is cosmetic in nature, however, limited to weapon and monster skins. Some options include the Kraken Wood Wendigo skin, the Assault Ragnarok skin pack, and the Goliath skin bag skin, among many others. I just wanted to bring this up because I saw this this morning, kind of to solicit some some talk from our uh, our people here listening to the show. We appreciate you guys joining us. What they think about Day One DLC? Maybe we do a poll. Okay. Um, Real quick, seems, I, I, this is a yeah. this is a breaking comment from Ego Hanner Two K Ten Eddie 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 Ah! <laughs> we love Eddie. Eddie's the best. Eddie's the best. A great source of news for us. This seems to me, Greg, to be incredibly excessive. You know what I mean? Okay. Just super excessive. Now, again, no one's saying you have to buy this stuff. It would, $60 plus $136 would be, if you bought everything, be $196, close to $200 with tax, right? That is excessive to me. To even make these kinds of things available, what's the point? Then again, it's not really breaking the game. It's not immersion breaking. It's, it's, it's aesthetic. Um, so I'm kind of curious what everyone thinks about this, and I'm curious also what you think about this, because while I don't have a problem with some skins being available or, you know, uh, So do you want to know about quests, Day 1 DLC in general, or it evolves Day 1 let's DLC? Do, let's stick to Evolve. Is, okay. is $136 worth of DLC excessive? Um, and I'm hearing just anecdotally, because I've not played the game yet, we have it, I've not played it. Um, I'm hearing mixed things about Evolve. Really? Yeah. Um, some people were saying that it's it's it seems a little empty. I was reading or whatever that it takes a while to find the creature. Well, that's um, I mean, hmm. That there's some, there's a lot of dead time in the game, like downtime. Okay. Um, but I, I, did, I did a straw poll, everybody. There's your straw poll. Tell me, y'all wanted straw polls. There you go. Ba 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 bam. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> so you want to know my opinion yeah. on this? On this? Thing I would here. like to. I. Is it excessive? It sounds excessive when you say it's $136,000 or whatever. $136, not thousand. Um, but you don't have to buy it all. If it's a skin packs or skin packs, who the fuck cares about skin packs? Unless it's like, I buy like, what's excessive? What I find excessive and a little bit annoying are the retailer exclusive bonuses and whatnot, right? Like when I, I'm a big Batman fan, Batman comes out and if I want Batman Beyond and if I want Dark Knight Rises, and if I want Batman from the movies or whatever, I have to go and buy the codes offline because I can or off eBay because I can only buy one pre-order bonus. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what they did with the Arkham games. That's what they always do with the Arkham games. And it's like, okay, that's all right, but I'd much rather have it where I could buy it day one and get what I want right away. So this is getting around that. Now I I wouldn't go through and buy it. I'm glad the option is there. But like skin packs and stuff, if it's not breaking the game, if it's just all cosmetic, then why worry about it? That's my thing. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, that's a good way of putting it. That's not because it's not substantial. There's just a ton of it. To me, it's it's just excessive. It yeah. seems a little greedy. Mm -hmm. Perfectly honest. Sure, sure. But sure, again, sure. no one's holding a gun to your head. People are saying it's excessive. I want to hear more on this, other than just that it's excessive. Man, this straw poll is kind of cool. Look at it. It updates without me having to do anything. Um, now, Greg, mm -hmm. um, we talked about Peter Molyneux in that game Goddess and how it didn't f live up to its Kickstarter promises. Yeah. Um, there's two interesting stories today about Goddess and about Peter Molyneux. And I, the, one of the things that it talks about is something I forgot about. And I'm, I'm curious if you remember this. But first, I'm going to talk about Goddess itself. For people who don't remember, Goddess was a god built, like a, like a, a you know, god sim, basically, which Peter Molyneux is very well known for. Um, that was Kickstarter in 2012. It came out on iOS and Android, I think, and then never came, what? I want to time out. Sorry, we did the poll, and now people are is caught up to where they can respond. Captain Mullet says any day one DLC could have been in the game at launch, and as such, means resources that could have been put into the game prior to the launch were instead put elsewhere to the detriment of the launch day experience. It's just wrong. I, I don't. It's I don't necessarily. True. I don't necessarily agree with that. Turtle Rock said that you know we we have to go for certification two months out. 
Like, what do we do with our team? And we have to have them creating stuff, doing things. And again, it's just, people are saying it's not just skins. There's unlockable cosmetic items, but I'll give you a reason to keep playing, all this different stuff. I, I don't know what else it is otherwise, but like, I understand them wanting to make money on, like, it, games are so goddamn expensive right now, you know what I mean? I'm not going to fault them for trying to get more out of it, trying to figure out making a different way. Well, let's, well, making games is expensive. Games are cheaper than they've 100%. Been. I'm sorry. I meant it in the making sense, not, just, not in terms of and you I, buying I, it. I wrote a piece to dispel this at IGN a year or two ago. Yeah. $60 games today are way, way cheaper in real money, inflated mon inflation-adjusted money, than games were when we were kids, period. Yeah. You know? Remember that what I remember as clear as day when I bought Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy III, it was what well, we we knew it as on SNES in '94. Yeah. It was seventy dollars in 1994, which is more like a hundred and a hundred and five dollars today. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Fantasy Star Five, which is always a great example because it was a huge Genesis card in '95, cost a hundred dollars in 1995, a hundred dollars, nine nine ninety nine. So games are cheaper today, but games are expensive, and that's really on the publishers to figure to get that shit in, in order. You know, our Walt says it's basically like asking if there are too many options. How can you ever have too many options? It's a good point. Mm -hmm. I, I again, I don't think they're locking. And again, you need to clarify this for me, Chad, if I'm wrong, because I am. I am saying that it's skins based on what you read there. Did you read? Any, what, what did you read? Anything that was egregious to you? Like they're not locking. No, it out, seemed like it was. Eddie said it was all aesthetic. They're not locking out maps. They're not locking out full-on monsters. They're lock. They're locking out bonuses for you to say, "Oh man, that looks really cool. I should try that." And someone says, Instakiller says, $60 is not cheap. No, $60 is not cheap, but $60 is way cheaper than the $50, $60, $70, $80 people were paying for NES and SNES games in the late 80s and early 90s. Mr. Bladefist, I paid $80 for Killer Instinct Gold on N64. Exactly, and Killer Instinct came out in the late 90s. So, so yeah. you have to adjust, you know, obviously your money's becoming more and more worthless. That's how inflation works. And, um, and you know, so when Fantasy Star 4 came out, and that was $100 and $95, that's what it cost. $100. Yeah. That's a lot more money today. You know, so you've got to kind of count your blessings in a way that the manufacture of games uh, has gone down. That's why games are cheaper; they're not cartridges anymore. Yeah. Um, but the the expense of making a AAA experience is, is through the roof, and so they they do have to figure out. It's it's on, it's not on gamers ultimately to figure that out. It's on the publishers to figure that out. Derek Hellman, heir to the Hellman's mayonnaise fortune, mm -hmm. says the thing I think Turtle Rock did right is the fact that the DLC they are offering doesn't gate off those who don't want to play them. You can play against anything and everything the others buy, unlike the way COD map packs make online exclusive to those who purchased it. Sorry, thank you for letting me catch up. No, it's okay. I just want to make sure we're representing... I just want to, I want to cruise because we're running really late. Well, before we do that, you, the biggest news has happened. Cisco, our, our boy Cisco has come with us on the ride. Oh my God. He's, as you all know, Cisco is a big Podcast Beyond fan. This is not a joke. I'm telling you right now, this is not a joke. Cisco has now come over... To the kind of funny games cast. God bless him. Supporting God us. bless him. What a good guy that Cisco. Is. He's a really nice man. Sorry, Goddess. All right, so there's two stories about Goddess I think are in essential to go into. One is by Ben Skipper at International Business Times. We we touched on Goddess and its and its failed Kickstarter promises. Certainly not the first game to fail on Kickstarter and not live up to it. Um, it says Peter Molyneux apologizes for unfulfilled Goddess Kickstarter promises. So we yeah. we introduced the problems and now he's kind of addressed them. Um, it says in 2012, game designer Peter Molyneux took the Kickstarter to crowdsource funding for Goddess. A spiritual successor to one of his earlier games, Populous. So, you know, people love Populous. Yeah. The Kickstarter succeeded, bringing in 526,000 pounds, a figure which activated a number of goals for the project, including additional multiplayer mode and a Linux version. Backers also received various items and promises for backing with bigger rewards for offering more, or more funding. Rock, Paper, Shotgun, which we read their story, recently brought the issue to attention, noting that the Linux version and art books had yet to be made, and the crucial feature of Goddess has also yet to be implemented. Um, so they go on and say um, that, uh, and I'm not going to play it here. You guys can look at it for it. Peter Molyneux uh, put a video together with the Goddess team. Oh, yeah? Um, I heard about this. Somebody tweeted it. I, want, I, think I want to say Patrick did and said it was really awkward. And he says, he says in part, I apologize to everyone for the mistakes that I've made. You have been harsh and please continue to be harsh. I don't want them to stop doing Goddess because of the mistakes that we've made, but I want to learn from them. Mm -hmm. Now, that's easy to say, but again, this is why people, this is real money. Yeah. That frankly is in their pockets. You know, um, and this is again why I think Kickstarter is interesting and good things come from Kickstarter. Shovel Knight, my favorite game of last year, is a Kickstarter game. Yeah. You know, that wouldn't exist without Kickstarter. Um, I still can't believe they couldn't have got funding for that. I, I think I think there's some publishers that have a lot of regret about yeah, of funding course Shovel Knight. Yeah. But um, it doesn't make it any better. You took five, oh, $750,000. Yeah. You know, from people. And the game is going to maybe come out in some form, but there's more to this story, Greg. Uh oh. Do you remember. The game Curiosity. The cube. Yeah. You get to the center of the cube, yeah. So Rob Crossley at GameSpot wrote, Curiosity winner once promised a life-changing prize by Peter Molyneux. You remember this? Vaguely. Has received nothing. Wow. Oh. 
Developer 22 can stop the p responding to winners' emails. Molyneux offers new apology. Interesting. The story, and I want I want to be clear that this story comes from Eurogamer from an extensive interview. Yeah. Um, and they and Gamespot sourced it. I don't want to read the the Eurogamer piece is huge. You can go to Eurogamer and check it out. But uh, Crossley, Rob Crossley, uh, narrowed it down to say this: Brian Henderson, the 20 year old Scott whose life was thrust into the spotlight when he became the winner of Peter Molyneux's Curiosity game, has not received any money since winning what was described to him as a life changing prize. Curiosity was an experimental iOS game released in November 2012 that offered one lucky player a unique reward. The game presented dozens of vast layers of cubes, each in case within each other in a Russian doll setup, with players from the outside picking each layer apart piece by piece. The cube's six faces contained hundreds of thousands of cubelets presented to all players simultaneously via shared servers. These were all restlessly picked away for seven months until May 2013 when the, uh, when the final layer opened. The iOS experiment's popularity was fueled by claims made by its designer, Peter Molyneux, who said that what lies in the center of the cube was a life-changing prize, which would be given to the person who picks off the final cubelet. Henderson, by chance, was that final player, and he was told to become the god of gods in Molyneux's next game, Goddess. According to Molyneux, in interviews conducted in 2013, the god of gods would be able to influence certain multiplayer modes in Goddess, and along with this would receive a cut of the game's revenue. Oh! Now, in an interview with Eurogamer nearly two years since winning Curiosity, Henderson says that he has not received any money, nor has Goddess's developer 22 cans maintain contact with him. He explains, quote, For a moment, I was excited. My general feeling was, depending on how well the game does, I was thinking in terms of the best, I could get 10,000 to 500,000 pounds. Still, that would be awesome, but not far, not so far, not a penny. The problem is that Henderson's role in Goddess cannot commence until the game's multiplayer is introduced, yet this has not materialized since the game's launch on PC in September 2013, nor after its release across iOS in August. Um, so there's just problem after problem spawning from Molyneux and, and kind of empty promises, and that would piss me off too. He was, frankly, this is kind of full of shit. Yeah. So, you know, like, I'm sure that he had good intention, but you didn't fall through on them. But when this is, and this is the weird labyrinthine kind of tendrils that are out with this. Goddess is kickstarted with people's money. They can't fulfill the promise for Kickstarter. He makes a promise with his other game, assuming that they can fulfill the promises made on Goddess, which cannot be fulfilled, and therefore he screws another person. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, this is weird. Yeah, no, it's super weird. Our, our good friend Kez McDonald posted today over on Kotaku uh, this one, this whole editorial about how she wished she had never given them money. And it's like. And she gave him 30 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which is like in a, in, a, in real money, I think it's like forty. It's, it's bucks between right? twenty five cents and a thousand dollars. Right, exactly. It's 45, Somewhere I think it's forty five dollars. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, he she has this whole thing going through, and like, look at you can, I love when Keza writes. You can just read it in her voice. Oh, what? Of course, your praises should have been me. Um, but yeah, it's something that's going around the industry right now. People are not thrilled with it, understandably so. And, and it sucks. I like Peter Molyneux. I like the ideas he has, but this goes back to why we're always talking about why we like being on Patreon and not Kickstarter. We're on Patreon. If we don't hit the goals we set for ourselves of exclusive episodes, the live streams we have coming for you, the let's plays we have coming for you, then you take your money back and our number falls and we there's an immediate reaction and we know we're fucking up and we can change it. And that's why we're so anxious to do the survey with you, to talk to you, to bounce an idea here and have your input on it because we want to make sure we're serving you in the best way possible. Yeah, I think, you know, to, to just follow up to give Molyneux a voice here, um, it, it, the rest of the story says, uh, Henderson had tried to maintain contact with 22 Cans about the promised reward, but said he was left frustrated after many routine emails to the studio. Quote, a month or two after winning, I would email them every month purely because I expected more communication with them, but it wasn't happening. Poor I would ask, so what's happening? When am I going to find out more stuff? What's going to happen specifically? They were taking their time to answer. They would say, we need to do this first and tell you afterwards. Since I won and a year after, I would email them as a ritual thing every month just to get some kind of update. Eventually, I was like, they're not being professional at all. Communication is non-existent, so I'm not even going to try anymore. End quote. Henderson has not received an apology from Molyneux or his team at 22 Cans before Eurogamer had contacted the studio about the story. Molyneux said, that's pretty poor, isn't it? Um, and he said, he should have contact here. That's pretty shoddy for us to not keep him posted. I totally and absolutely and categorically apologize. That isn't good enough, and I, I'll, I'll take it on my own shoulders that I should have made sure he was communicated with. We will today onwards do that. So... I don't know, man. Problems. Like, I'm sure Peter Molyneux's heart was in the right place, but yeah. you can't. Like, to me, that kind of thing comes off as kind of being full of shit when you're when you only apologize for something when you are called out on it. Instead of you had to have known, right? Like, putting it out and kind of pretending the problem doesn't exist. Here's the thing, though, Here, is I, is an issue. I agree, and I'm not at all saying it's okay, but I, it's one of those. How much of it is on Peter Molyneux's shoulder? How big is 22 Cans, and what's their responsibilities? Right. Right now, when something's wrong with our Patreon, when somebody's upset about it, I'm usually the guy who knows because I'm checking our Patreon pages, right? So it's, it's theoretically, you could go on a podcast tomorrow, get interviewed w by somebody, and they could say something, oh yeah, and you know, yesterday on the, pa the Patreon page, so many people were mad about this, that, the other, and you'd have to be like, I don't know anything about that. That sucks. 
I mean, I, I, I agree with and you. I'm just, and I think that's just right. devil's no, advocate. No, 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 I agree with you. And uh, Peter Molyneux is a legend, and I well respect a the person legend. in this industry, and we, and we love him, and we and his game, you know, Populous and all that kind of stuff. I mean, these are important games, but mm -hmm. this these two dueling stories show an irresponsibility with his, deve with his development right. house. Right, 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 100%. And he is the boss, ultimately... Yep. You know, when BP, for instance, spilled oil into the Gulf Coast, well, that's not the CEO's fault, except for the fact that the CEO took all the heat for it, sure. and he was also not very good about sure. dealing with the problem. But someone has to. The, there's a boss. There's someone responsible. I agree. I agree with that. You know, yeah. so we've hit seven thousand viewers, by the way. Thank you. The chat's flipping out. Seven thousand. Oh god, I almost lost my mouse. There. <laughs> You're so excited. You spike your mouse on the wall. Greg, let's keep cruising. Cruising. Uh, this story comes from our friend Luke Carmali, our good friend Luke Carmali at IGN. The only one uh, doing any work over there right now. EA and this isn't a, this isn't a surprise, but we should talk about it anyway briefly. EA says Titanfall Two will likely be on multiple platforms. <gasps> I don't think that's a big, big no yeah. big surprise. Um, EA has suggested news. Titanfall 2 will not be an Xbox exclusive like its predecessor was. As the mountain of evidence for a multi-platform sequel continues to rise, the publisher's CFO, Blake Jorgensen, said during Monday's technology, internet, and media conference that Titanfall 2 would, quote, probably happen, and owners of other platforms would likely see it. Quote, last year it was on Xbox only. In the future, we haven't yet announced, but we'll probably have another Titanfall game. It will probably be a bigger footprint than just a single platform. I think that's a huge positive for us, end quote. So this isn't a huge surprise, but it's a story worth touching on. Yep. Titanfall did well on Xbox One and Xbox 360, but I don't think as well as they thought it was going to do. And the game seems to have fallen off a complete cliff when right. it comes to interaction with it. I know that there are people on PC especially that can, like, couldn't find games weeks after the game came out. The problem um, is they didn't have everything they should have had at launch. and then by the, Now they've patched all that stuff in. I keep talking about this. It's a game I would love to get back to and screw around with. Because like the new mode they added, which is Horde mode, I would love to play. But it's just like there's so much competition now. There's so many other things to <coughs> be current on that I, I feel like I want to be, need to be, that I, I don't know when I will. But I loved Titanfall. Like, I don't like many first-person shooters, especially multiplayer-focused ones. I had a great time with Titanfall for um, a month and a half. I think that uh, it's not. I, I've said this before. I think that the deal with EA and Microsoft over Titanfall was made uh -huh. with assumptions, rightful assumptions, assumptions that I think we all shared that Xbox One would clobber PS4 because I sure. think that yeah, people yeah, yeah. and they weren't named PS4 and Xbox One at that time, but people with the Xbox 360 success, especially in the shooter hungry West, the deal made sense. Yep. I think EA yep. was full of regret that the game was exclusive, and I remember that even developers from the studio, from Respawn, weren't sure whether it was exclusive. They, didn't own, they don't own the IP and it wasn't their deal. And I think there was some, it seemed like there was some trepidation or disappointment that the game wasn't gonna be coming on everything because, oh, it didn't, yeah. because it didn't do the splash damage that it could have done if it hit all the platforms. Well, I think if EA could have gone back and they wanted to make an exclusive deal, it would have been exclusive to PS4. And so I think that- If they would have known. It, but who could have known? Yeah, you wouldn't know that the, the, Sony would do everything right for a change and exactly, everything would change. Yeah. What's interesting about it that I don't think a lot of maybe viewers who don't get a chance to talk to developers understand, I think when you talk to a developer who's working on an exclusive game, Nine, and I mean off the record, nine times out of ten, every time, honestly, every time I've ever talked to them, they're not thrilled with it. It's great to have guaranteed money and have this bonus, but they make art to get it to as many people as possible. They hate the fact that we made this and we are already cutting the pie down to one platform and PC. You know what I mean? Like, we want it to be to everyone all the time. We don't want to do this this way, but business realities dictate we have to. Right. I think that, you know, obviously Microsoft is instrumental in getting the game to console I think to begin with and, and yeah. there was some but anyone would have worked with Respawn to get their game so I would be interested to be a fly on the wall when that happened and how that happened and you have to assume that deal happened a long time ago as we said I think that there's some regret they're not going to make the same mistake with the sequel it will be on all the platforms right. I don't think that surprises anyone and Vita and Vita Titanfall 2 and Vita uh, sad news Greg from uh, our friend Jason Schreier at Kotaku one of the great journalists in the industry uh, he breaks a story unfortunately and says big layoffs at EverQuest Studio today uh, Daybreak the game studio behind EverQuest and H1Z1. And you guys will remember that Daybreak is now Sony Online Entertainment. Right. So there's going to be some redundancies now, obviously. Is laying off a number of staff, including Dave Jorgensen, the man who had served as the face of EverQuest for many years, Kotaku has learned. We don't know just how many people Daybreak is letting go, as staff are being informed right now whether or not they will remain employed with the company. The newly titled Daybreak, which was called Sony on Online Entertainment for close to two decades, went independent and changed its name last week after Sony sold it to a New York-based management firm. Although the company was all smiles about the deal in public, staff were immediately told that the company would be laying off people in order to become profitable, according to a person close to the studio. Quote, most of the management keeps trying to get people pumped up about the new direction, but no one knows for sure they'll be a part of it yet. Uh, end quote, said that person who requested anim anonymity. 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 I hate that word. Because they were not authorized to speak with press about the layoffs. Uh, so our very best goes out to everyone at SOE slash day, um, Daybreak. Um, you know people there. I know you, a lot of people. Um, DC Universe Online, obviously. Um, so... Uh, 
our very best goes out to them, and we hope that they all land on their feet. Yeah, DC is done. I, and that's the one thing I don't understand. I'm, I'm looking at the IGN version. For some reason, I couldn't load Kotaku. It talks about Daybreak being hit with this layoffs. A uh, statement from Daybreak, Michelle Cagle, of course, a great woman, says strategic decision mm. to rationalize the business, San Diego and Austin. Like, I'm not sure how it's spread out, but they're not... Yeah, they're, they're just... I mean, EverQuest, obviously, uh, David here is the biggest guy from EverQuest, but if they're hitting up... Austin is where they make DC Universe Online. San Diego is just a big SOE slash Daybreak place. It's interesting. It looks like it's just everything, not just EverQuest. I mean, these things, unfortunately, these things happen when a company acquires another company. We, we were at IGN when a company acquired, acquired us, us yeah, and yeah. we had Lost a lot of significant friends. layoffs. Yeah. And it sucks, and it's scary. It's very scary. Yeah, super sad. And um, whether you don't know if you're, 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 the other shoe's going to drop and your, your number's going to be pulled, and right. thankfully ours wasn't. Um, but we lost a lot of friends, and it's, it's always sad to see that happen. What was interesting to me is, even though I'm not an EverQuest fan, I know that they're working on a new EverQuest, and it's interesting to get rid of the director. And I wonder if that is indicative of problems with that game as well. But, yeah. but, who, but who knows? Right now, I think they're focused as a company on H1Z1. Um, so, uh, you know, our very best, again, goes out to all those uh, affected Effective, by that. Yeah. I'm sure they'll land on their feet. Uh, Washington Post, uh, Greg Wright, Emily R., and this is a story that was going on yesterday. I should have gotten this a little earlier. I buried the lead a little bit. John Stewart is leaving The Daily Show. Oh, yeah. Um, after, and, and this makes me feel old because I remember watching The Daily Show and actually really loving The Daily Show with Craig Kilborn. Greg, Greg, Kil, uh, yeah, Craig yeah, Kilborn. Yeah, yeah. And how different it was. He was just a weird dude. I, yeah. I thought he was really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a, a, what was a, a moment of Zembo? There was like, uh, remember when he did, he would sign, like there would be like his autograph and he would, what was that called? Something for us or, um, he had like his own segments basically on the show. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, but John Stewart has been on the show for 16 years, which is incredible. And, uh, it says John Stewart, uh, who pushed political comedy into a new realm with a new show that relayed news by parodying the news. We'll leave the D daily show later this year after 16 years at the helm of Comedy Central and that's Tuesday night. To a younger generation of viewers who stopped watching network news, his late night fake news show, which particularly delighted in skewering politicians and the media, made him a trusted messenger to millions. Since its launch with Stewart as host, he took over the program in 1999 from Craig Kilborn. The Daily Show has routinely, routinely packed up awards. It won the Outstand Outstanding Variety Series Emmy for 10 years in a row. Yeah. Stewart 52, who emphasized that he is a comedian rather than a news anchor, truly made his mark during the 2000 presidential election with his Indecision 2000 coverage of the George W. Bush and Al Gore recount in Florida, which is awesome. I remember that very well. Afterwards, everything on the show clicked, and Stewart emerged as the star of the Comedy Network, especially during the Bush administration, when the when the stentorian and seemingly exasperated host would take on policies of Bush Vice President Dick Cheney and Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld. Um, Stewart broke the news of his departure to his audience during the show's taping in New York. Almost immediately on social media, the tweets started from people who witnessed the announcement. One of them was David Axelrod, a former advisor to President Obama. <laughs> um, so obviously, John Stewart. You have to move on at some point, right? Right. And we know it. <laughs> and uh, it's it's weird to see him go. I'm not a huge fan of The Daily Show. Um, I wonder I, why. Well, no, it's not. I, I think John Stewart's a funny dude, and I I, I think he. I mean, I, the one thing that bothered me about him, and I think he was called out on it, and I think it's fair to say that he pretended like he hated everyone, but really he did have his own significant biases, sure. which I think did paint the news. So it's like it's easy to make fun of the media and make fun of the, the news, but when you're picking on one side par primarily, I thought he could have done a greater service picking on both sides because there's plenty of people to pick on on both sides. Sure. That said, he made me laugh more than once. Um, I watched the show hundreds of times. Um, the bigger thing I wonder about with him leaving and Colbert leaving have already left is what the hell are they going to do now because like that business at kind of funny dot com um you know because they have you know they have great talent there with guys like john oliver and stuff but they're not john or, or they're not colbert and stewart you know and so right, right, and right. that was their anchor they were getting better they were getting better ratings sometimes in real news shows on like on the on the cable news networks yeah, yeah, yeah. so if i were comedy central i'd be very nervous right, 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 right. um and i wonder if they could have paid him more to say, or if they could have figured something out, oh, he probably just wants to move on. I mean, he said, did you watch his goodbye or his announcement of his no, goodbye? No, I didn't watch it. First off, that's how a man says goodbye and doesn't ball. Well, I, maybe his last episode of ball like we did, but he got very emotional. But he, the thing he talks about right is the fact that uh, he's excited to go be able to spend an evening with his family. Like he has a wife and kids, mm. and like doing a daily show like that, uh, you know, even though it's filmed in the afternoon, like he's it's all encompassing. You know what I mean? Like he's pulled away from his family, so to be able to break away and then just go be. John Stewart comedian slash actor, whatever he wants to do, be a different story. Oh, and people are saying John. That's right. John Oliver is on HBO now, so they don't even have John Oliver. Yeah. So now yeah. they're so now they're 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 really screwed. Right. No, they'll find. There's great talent out there. They're gonna find great talent. Comedy Central um, has great connections, and obviously, you know, really 
helps establish new brands or whatever. Yeah. And so I think that um, we'll see. You know, we'll yeah. see what happens. But our very best goes out to him, of course. Um, as, he won't need it. He's great. No, he's and he's rich. So you know, what does he care? Uh, Greg, just a few more things. Um, actually, I'm going to cut some of this stuff out because we're running really, really late. So you just want to go back to the biggest story of the day, Cisco? Yeah, let's do that. Cisco loves us. Um, Cisco, everybody. I'm trying not to sneeze, Colin. It's not going well. We'll, I'm just, not let going it, we'll just let it out for Christ. Well, now it's just it's it's living in here. Um, Greg, since we are honored to have so many people with us today, yeah. um, we should go into the comments and talk to our people. Oh, okay. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, sound off in the comments. Talk to us right now. This is not the sub-only chat. Uh, this is just where you come, talk to us, we talk to you. Uh, while that catches up to everything, let's t new prize giveaway. Remember, every day we add something to the prize pack. Friday, we give it away. If you're a subscriber, you're automatically entered. If you're in the chat room, you're automatically entered. We shove them everybody together <coughs> on Friday. Pull a name, everybody wins. Yesterday, we added the Mega Blaster. I wore it, a lot of funny gifts and images came out of it. People were putting them up on the internet. I blew this up. It will come deflated, because it'll be too hard to pack like this. So you gotta put your mouth where Greg Miller's mouth was. Exactly. That may or may not be a selling point, depending on who you are. Alright, and then we're also gonna add... Oof, weesh, oof. State of the K, one year survival edition shirt. Yep, This very is from cool. that Xbox Can't event we went to. Yeah. yeah, I know. I, I've, I've tried to put it out of my head. Because I keep thinking, I'm like, well, I can just play the PC version. Ow. Dying Light's kind of scratching a niche. Yeah, that's true too. So there you go. Mega Blaster, t-shirt. Those are the first two things. God, it's only Tuesday. Oh, oh, it, it feels way... No, it's, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. What the hell what are you the, Oh, it's in the Takaiden mask was the other thing. Right. It's around here somewhere. We'll pack it up for you. So there's three things. I was like, geez, you made me scared. I was like, oh god, it's only Tuesday. I know, that's what I thought too when I only had two prizes. I was like, wait, what the hell's going on? All right. Uh, let's jump in here and Jump talk. in the comments. Um... T-Man2096 says, any recommendations for 3DS games? Getting my first one in a few weeks. I don't like fantasy. He says fantasy something, probably games. It went too quickly. You need to get uh, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask now. You need to get the Marios, the new Marios. The, 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 the whatever the last 3D Mario was. That was World, right? Super Mario 3D World. And then Land was the, or was it vice versa? Yo, Tim. Yeah. Was it Land on DS? Super Mario Land? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Get that business. Uh, get that Project Steam that's coming up, too. Are you excited about that Project Steam? Yeah, it looks cool. I can't wait for Project Steam. I'm going I'm to go look at it again. I can't remember when it comes out, though. I'm I don't sure know. The chat's you should popping have, off telling You me. shouldn't have any problems for the supposedly vaunted 3DS library of excellent games. You should certainly be able to find, <laughs> find plenty of games to play. Um, Prima... Uh, pr Premadata8710 says, what do you think of H1Z1? I don't really have anything to say about this. What do you think about it? I didn't really like it. It's early. It's it's early. It's, you know, going to be broken. But I jumped in and played it for a little bit and just did not hit on any of the points I wanted to hit on. Like you said, uh, Dying Light's hitting on a lot of things we want for our zombie games. But then, yes, State of Decay, I'm more excited about it. And I played the hell out of it on 360. I'm excited to play it on Xbox One. Stream it with you guys. Run around. Explore that map. But then again, I think about it. I could just play it on PC. I got, the, I got the cool controller to plug into my PC, but then I think about all the other games that are to play. I still haven't played Game of Thrones Episode 2 yet. i got to sort my life out. Uh, Melquire750 says, Colin, do you play Vita anymore since you left IGM? What kind of question is that? You don't, you don't have the Muni ride. I'm offended. Okay. Want me to ban him? I'm, I'm yeah. ban, him from, ban him from the channel. <laughs> I'm only kidding. As, as, v, as arguably Vita's biggest advocate in the entire gaming industry, I think it's safe to say that I still very much enjoy the device. I really like it for, um, I've been playing, I've been using it to, um, remote play. To, as remote play to play Costume Quest. Uh, did that a lot last week. Good. Uh, it's got that Persona too. Well, Persona 4. It's got that Persona as well, is what I meant. Not too. I guess it does. I uh, remember, of course, ladies and gentlemen, Kind of Funny Book Club for February is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. You can get that as a PlayStation 1 Classic, play it on your PS3, your PS Vita, all that stuff. Mr. Bladefist says the order is coming out on a Friday rather than a Tuesday. That's kind of weird. It is weird, but not not that weird. It happens. The reason they're doing that is because it is a worldwide release. Um, mm, so I didn't uh, know that. Yeah. So right, uh, I didn't think that. Yeah. So I think like I I want to say. Didn't the last one come out on a Friday? Did it? I'm gonna look it up. Well, I, I, the last one came out while we were at E3. I thought. Um, yeah. I it feel like it came out. Together. No, I feel like it, it did. It came out that Friday because the game was broken. Remember. That, Last of Us? Yeah, remember it was... There was oh, there was a problem with yeah, it. Yeah, it did, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. Last of Us did come out on a Friday, I remember that. Because I, I was in the airport leaving. And you're like and taking I was, off, you're like, no! And I was, I was writing the story from the airport. Um, let's see, T-Starkey0810 says, Started playing Symphony of the Night last night on my Vita while waiting for Beyond the Post. Hope you enjoy it. I gotta jump back in uh, and play it myself so we can be ready for the video game book club. Yeah. Um, 
I think this is going to be it. This is a dandy. I don't, I, the, the, the problem this about... a diaper the, dandy. The problem about doing something like Symphony of the Night is it's not going to get much better than that. Yeah. So, um, but we'll enjoy it while it lasts, Greg. We'll enjoy it while it lasts. That's all you can do. Um, comic, Cosmic Dancer 87 says, Thanks for the recommendation of Outland, Colin. You mentioned it last mm -hmm. night, and I love it. Outland's really good. Outland's awesome. You guys should check that out. It's a housemark game, but a very different kind of housemark game. It's not a twin-stick shooter. Um, let's Ugh. see... Jesus Christ, I got a lot of text while I'm going to Yeah, I show. did too. I did too. Let's do two more questions and then jump into sub.